Kula Vinaka and welcome to Talk Business. And a big hello as well to our viewers across the region receiving us through Sky Pacific. On the show tonight, Selling the Weather. We find out how this man makes a living by trading tomorrow's forecast. Exploring the opportunities of investing on the stock market and a sneak peek at Indonesian culture. How our Southeast Asian neighbors hope to increase bilateral trade through cultural exchange. All this coming up in the next half hour. Did you know that tomorrow's weather forecast has a fair bit of economic value attached to it? Well, it sure does. What we don't realize is that much of our economic development relies heavily on the weather. Whether it's authorities preparing for natural disasters, fishermen steering clear of an approaching storm, or the housewife putting out her laundry. Talk Business takes a closer look at what weather information can translate to and how one man has dared risking it as a business venture predicting tomorrow's weather. If there's anyone who has a tougher job than a psychic or a fortune teller, then it has to be the weatherman. Why? Well, everyone from the housewife who has to do her laundry to the fisherman who needs to hook his big catch, or just about anyone who dreads holding an umbrella, looks up to the weatherman for tomorrow's forecast. Because as oblivious as we are to this fact, Little do we realize that much of our everyday life depends on the weather. And this dates back to around 3000 BC to ancient India, when the beginnings of the study of weather patterns were first traced. Over time, a lot has changed, from the ancient Roman sundial days, when the device that measures time by the position of the sun were used. Today, through modern technology, the day-to-day -day temperature and rain activity can be determined through the state-of-the-art equipment as the economic value on weather information increases. What was once considered simple information is now pegged against a commercial value. And that's exactly where the Pilot Weather Service comes in, a global venture that's becoming a necessity likened to the family doctor or lawyer. Here at home, it might seem a little strange to buy weather information, but as the country's only private meteorologist puts it, this notion is slowly changing. If you wake up in the morning and you want to know whether to take an umbrella to, to work, that information might be worth 10, 20 cents. Okay? If you're protecting a fishing fleet, if you have a large resort that's uh, exposed to weather close to the, to the shore, um, if you are involved in uh, mining production, for example. Um, that's another area where weather affects everything that they do. So weather information can make their decision making simpler. With over 25 years of experience in weather forecasting, the private weatherman says across the globe, the dynamics of weather information is drastically changing. The way electricity works in, in many countries now is that the people who generate the power, generate it. The people who distribute it is an entirely different company. The people who own the power lines can be a different company again. So you have people making power, people moving power, and people providing the infrastructure across which power moves. And all of those want to know how much energy is going to be used. Now, energy companies would, would price their electricity based on whether or not the temperature tomorrow was going to be 30 degrees or 35 degrees, because if it's 35, probably 50% more people are going to have their air conditioners on, okay? So the demand for power is going to go up. So when demand goes up, price goes up. Now, all this is weather, all this is weather, okay? But essentially, what it comes down to is economics, but weather is the driver. So for people who understand the weather, they can find themselves in a situation where the, where the knowledge they have in their brain is actually worth quite a lot of money. And that's where private weather, um, that's, that's the philosophy of private weather. That's why there's scope for a private weather service here too. What to plant, when to plant, and even perhaps whether to not plant. Um, there's nothing worse for a farmer 
who go to the effort of spending money and, and working in the field to plant his crops only to find that either drought or flood destroys them. Um, often it's better if information <coughs> is available to help them decide um, that a particular type of weather pattern is coming to simply hold off and not plant. Um, save the seed, plant later, rather than go through the costs of, of losing all their seed. Even the tourism sector has realised the importance of how weather information can safeguard it against unforeseen risks. Following the tsunami in March in Japan, um, we've had a lot more inquiries through the Hotel Association and individual resorts about the risk of tsunamis here in Fiji. So I've been able to work with a number of the hotels as well to explain to them what the risks are and, and um, we also provide up-to-date up information about tsunami hazards whenever they occur. So um, that's another part of Fiji's economy which can really benefit from weather services which are provided on a, on a direct basis, not, not as the weather service does by broadcasting to everybody and, and everybody picks out the little bit that they want. Our business is built on a direct relationship between us as the, the, the weather experts and them as the decision makers so that we provide the information to them at the right time, in the right format, in a format they understand and in a way that helps them make the specific decision they have to make. If weather forecasting is right too often for us to ignore and wrong too often for us to rely on it, what happens when Neville Cook gets it wrong? Well, look, we're forecasters, we do get it wrong. Um, there's no doubt about that. I'm, I'm a weather forecaster. I've been doing this for 25 years. Um, but um, the, the, op the other option is to toss a coin. Is it going to rain or not? Well, we'll toss a coin. So you've got 50-50. So if I'm better than 50-50, I'm adding value. Okay. Now, I don't know, I, I wouldn't say I'm 100% right, but I like to think that I'm a lot better than 50. Okay, I think I'm probably around 75, 80, 85 percent correct. And if you wonder who actually buys this sort of information, well, you'll surely be surprised. The private forecaster has 50 odd clients who are subscribed to his service, and on a good day, at least 25,000 others through Vodafone's texting platform. Based on okay, am I going to? Um waste my time having to think about what's going to happen just going outside and taking a look at it predict what's going on or do I go buy myself the, the newspaper for whatever the amount or else do I put the radio on to see whether something strange is going to happen but this is very convenient and given the popularity of receiving weather information through a text the mobile giant is taking this up another level going forward you will see more graphical use of it. For example, you will see a four-day forecast that you can actually see it on your screen on your mobile phone. Of course, the, that would be a premium service. As the economic value on weather information turns it into a viable commodity, so too in the future will more businesses rely on this critical piece of mostly unpredictable data. Well, like they say, weather is a great metaphor for life. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad, but there's nothing much you can do about it other than carry an umbrella. Rachnanath for Talk Business.